We have just passed the one month mark since Cyberpunk 2077's release and quite a lot has happened. Much of which I would say came unexpected. Here at the start of 2021, it is a waiting game to see what Cyberpunk becomes. Many including myself wonder what support for this game will look like from CD Projekt Red. Thus far they remain silent for the most part, as I'm certain they are hard at work fixing the many massive issues that plague this experience. CDPR's top priority at the moment, and probably for the next few months, will be getting this game stable, and beyond just the word playable on last-gen consoles. Every day Cyberpunk 2077 is not available in the PlayStation Store means more potential profit lost for CDPR. This is a company that is in trouble. The executives put all of their marbles on the success of Cyberpunk, and really CDPR has to spend this entire year attempting to fix the damage that they've created to their own reputation by launching a game that was just not ready. The legal threats continue to mount against CD Projekt Red as more lawsuits are filed, and more countries investigate the misleading remarks that were made prior to launch day. But besides CDPR being held accountable for the things that they said and promised, there's definitely some things to look forward to in terms of fixes and new content. An update on the big January patch should be coming very soon, and free DLC is literally right around the corner. Thanks to data mining, we're getting an idea on what some of this content may include, as well as potential long-term plans for the story DLC expansions. So a lot to discuss, but as usual, before we proceed forward, if you do go on to enjoy this content and want to show your support for videos like this, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing for more, and turning notifications on so you do not miss out on any new content. Also, if you want to further support this content, check out my Patreon and consider supporting it. And despite good reviews on PC, the console version of Cyberpunk 2077 did not meet the quality standard we wanted it to meet. I and the entire leadership team are deeply sorry for this, and this video is me publicly owning up to that. Please, don't fault any of our teams for what happened. They all are incredibly talented and hardworking. Myself and the board are the final decision makers, and it was our call to release the game. Although, believe me, we never ever intended for anything like this to happen. I assure you that we'll do our best to regain your trust. As of recording this video, we actually have a giant update on Cyberpunk 2077 coming via CD Projekt Red. Company co-founder Marcin Wenski offered another video update apologizing and giving a commitment to the quality of this game and to improving it in 2021. We actually now do have an official roadmap, and for those really getting excited or hopeful for story single-player DLC, it looks like that may be 2022. The free next-gen console update is not coming until the later half of this year, and it seems like free DLC is actually going Going to be a couple of months away. We're going to be talking a little bit more about free DLC and some of the cut content later in this video, so check that out. But this is the roadmap. We're going to have the January and February updates fixing the game, and then free DLC after that, and then I guess to end 2021, it looks like free next-gen console updates will be coming, and then I assume 2022 is going to be the single-player story expansions, but there was no details or any mention of that, at least yet from CD Projekt Red. Now, we do have some more answers about what, the ha what actually happened with this disaster launch. Uh, this Q&A page, these are just a summary of what Marcin Winski said in the video, but he says, what was the main issue that made development for consoles that difficult? And the answer is that the main culprit was having to constantly improve our in-game streaming system for old-gen consoles. Streaming is responsible for feeding the engine with what you see on screen, as well as the game mechanics. Since the city is so packed and the disk bandwidth of old-gen consoles is what it is, this is something that constantly challenged us. But the issue that I have with all of this is the transparency. Where was this? This is something Something that people have been talking about CD Projekt Red for years. This is the assumption we all had with them was that they were being truthful, telling us honestly how this game was evolving. Like any questions about optimization before release, they just weren't truthful at all about the issues that they were running into. Anyway, we'll continue on, but there are some other answers about old gen consoles. It's pretty much the same things that we've been hearing as of late, but it's more detailed. Now, another question. What are you going to be doing going forward to fix Cyberpunk 2077? The answer is we are focused on fixing the bugs and crashes as players are experiencing across every platform. You can expect more in the way of patches, both small and large, to be released regularly. The first update will drop in the next 10 days, and will be followed by a larger, more significant update in the weeks after, probably sometime in February. Our plans for supporting Cyberpunk 2077 in the long term are unchanged, and we will continue to introduce updates and patches to give all players across all consoles and PCs a better experience with the game. The next question is actually one that a lot of people are curious about, and that is free DLC. And they announced that we're 
we're still planning on releasing free DLC for the game like The Witcher 3. However, we have decided that our priority is working on the most important fixes and updates. We will be releasing free DLC afterwards. We'll have more to say about that in the coming months, and we'll talk about that later on in this video because I think we have an idea on some of that uh, content, which is probably cut content. Now, another question, when can we expect the next-gen update for Cyberpunk 2077? And again, this is the free one that's supposed to be coming for Xbox Series S and X and PlayStation 5 players, and they said that they're aiming for the second half of the year, and they'll reveal more when they have more to share. Another question, this is actually a good one, about the actual development team. Are they going to have to crunch to work in the patches? CDPR announces, the team is working to bring relevant fixes to the game without any obligatory overtime. Avoiding crunch in all of our future projects is one of our top priorities. That's great news. And then the last question here, when is the game coming back to the PlayStation Store? And basically the summary of just these two sentences is that they're working on it. But looking at this entire statement and everything that was said, it's not going to give answers for a lot of the questions that I think many have, especially in regards to why does so much of this game just feel unfinished? But they do give some clarity on the review process and what actually happened and why the game runs differently on console versus PC. Although I kind of suspect that this may be an answer to the lawsuits that are now being thrown at them them because that seems to be the only thing that's being answered here, but I still stand by my initial assessment, which is if they had so many difficulties with the last generation of hardware, they really should have just cancelled it. Because what they face now is their reputation has been damaged and a lot of people do not trust anything that will be produced by this developer moving forward. And that is disappointing because I still think that there is greatness with Cyberpunk 2077. There's a lot of things that CDPR did well within this game, but there obviously are areas that needed a lot more work. It's obvious now though, but throughout 2021 and 2022, CD Projekt Red's going to be attempting to repair their image somewhat with new updates, patches, and content for Cyberpunk 2077. And it does feel like they are committed to this game, so they're not leaving it behind, but their reputation is never going to be back to what it once was, which was the industry darling, the company that came from the ground up and really took this industry by storm. That's just no more. A lot of people feel like that trust has been broken with CD Projekt Red, and ultimately this all does fall on the executives that thankfully Marcino Winsky is taking ownership because the development team just they did their best with this game. They needed more time. They were putting their finger on the alarm button and nobody was listening. And unfortunately, the executives are paying that price now. But it does seem like Cyberpunk 2077 has a bright future. It just seems like it's going to take time and people being patient. So looking at this entire statement and everything that CDPR says here, it's nothing really is surprising. It's mostly what we've heard and seen before. A lot of things that I expected. The only thing that does surprise me is the roadmap in which free DLC is actually coming a lot later than I had originally expected, but obviously they said again, their focus is on improving the game first and foremost. And then the free next-gen update, which is going to be coming much later than I had originally anticipated. And again, there's just no news on multiplayer or single-player story DLC, which I imagine will be the focus in 2022 and 20. 2023 for the multiplayer. Nonetheless, there's been a lot of news surrounding Cyberpunk 2077 within the last week or two, a lot of it negative, but this is an interesting one that I wanted to quickly discuss, and it's that Cyberpunk 2077 has lost about 80% of its Steam players since launch. This is said to be three times faster than The Witcher 3. Now, the issue I have with these news reports that are painting it like uh, Cyberpunk is losing uh, thousands upon thousands of players is the fact that this isn't a AAA live service online multiplayer game like Anthem. Fallout 76 and Marvel's Avengers. This is a single player game. This is what happens. People complete the game and they move on. And the difference between The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk is just the fact that The Witcher 3 is a much more meaty game in my opinion. Of course, Cyberpunk does have some more replay value to it in terms of build and such, but The Witcher 3 just had a lot more content in terms of side activities and such that you could do. That's why I don't really like this comparison. But also, I mean, if you want to complete Cyberpunk 2077 start to finish, you could probably do that in about 17-ish hours, maybe even a little bit under that if you're trying to rush through it. And then if you do take on some of the bigger activities, side activities, side jobs, like the Pan Am storyline, Judy's storyline, Johnny's past and such, that's probably going to be around 40 hours, which isn't as long as I think some people would have expected this entire Cyberpunk 2077 experience to be. But the point is, people played the game, they finished it, and they've moved on. There's not much to do for right now. And yeah, I mean, single player DLC is down the road, free DLC is right around the
around the corner, and that will certainly bring players back, and, and obviously mod support is another thing that a lot of people are getting excited for, especially some of the mods that have already been delivered. So there is a bright future for Cyberpunk 2077, the community is not going to be left behind. Now, the numbers that I personally had expected and think could have been possible obviously are not being reached just because of the fact that this launch has been... It's been a mess. But regardless, 79% of Steam players since launch leaving, I don't really think that's much of a big deal. But yes, yeah, certainly it, it does have to deal with the fact that this launch has been a mess, and also that there is a great deal of disappointment from a large portion of players. Now, speaking of disappointment, there's actually an interesting story I just quickly want to go over, and this involves an IGN interviewer asking members of the r slash cyberpunk game subreddit their opinion on Cyberpunk 2077. And what I will say here here first is if you're going to ask questions don't put the answers within your question because it just comes off as bad lazy piss poor journalism and this is what i mean ign was interviewing i guess random members of that subreddit and they kind of gave away what they were planning to do with their story they said how did that disappointment if you were disappointed in quotes, strike you. What do you remember feeling after launch? Was it nice to experience some validation from other users who are also struggling with the game's jank? Lastly, do you think that maybe going forward, gamers will remember how often that hype can lead to disappointment? I often felt that no matter what Cyberpunk ended up being, a lot of people were going to be let down by it. And obviously the person who was being interviewed did not like the, uh, let's just say where these questions were going. And they pointed out that one of the more positive subreddits for Cyberpunk 2077 right now is the low sodium cyberpunk subreddit which is just a lot of people sharing images and hype about the game because yes there is a community of players that are very happy with cyberpunk 2077 even as i said in both of my reviews the 40 hour one and the one that i just recently put out about two weeks ago there's a lot to love about cyberpunk 2077 unfortunately though a lot of that goodness is being thrown to the side obviously because of just how disastrous the game's launch has gone now as i said before in regards to ign and this specific interview questions they got called out on the low sodium cyberpunk subreddit this post kind of went somewhat viral with over 5,000 upvotes and a lot of people pointing out that they do enjoy Cyberpunk 2077 and they feel like some of games media are just looking for any reason to stomp on Cyberpunk but I'll leave that at what it is because I know right now opinions on Cyberpunk is pretty much like a war zone you cannot say that you find that some elements are great and some elements are people just want opinions that are you love it or you hate it which is just no games really like that but in other news this is going to be a very quick report on this news story but yeah there's a cyberpunk 2077 mobile listing out there and some people have fallen for this blatant scam i would imagine i would hope 99.9 percent .9 of those watching would not fall for something like this just the idea that cyberpunk 2077 could run on a mobile device at this point it's kind of funny but people have fallen for this, and it's been said that these scammers have made over $10,000 off of this uh, hack, I guess that's what, if you want to call it that. Pretty much you download this file, it's ransomware, and they threaten to take all your files away unless you pay up a certain amount of money in Bitcoin, and they've been making a killing off of this scam as of late. So if you see a one of these uh, fake little advertisements out there, Cyberpunk 2077 Mobile, which is being pretended to look like it's a Google Play Store listing, don't fall for it. Uh, maybe your little cousins or somebody else probably should know that but uh yeah i think most of you probably already know it yourselves but yeah people have followed for this which is pretty crazy but here in 2021 just an important reminder to educate those who are coming on the interwebs for the first time i don't know if they're using your computer or such but they may fall prey to some of these practices i mean i'm trying to think of scenarios that this actually could happen but hey apparently these scammers have made over ten thousand dollars which is just absolutely insane but as per xda-developers.com they pointed out uh the cyberpunk 2077 mobile game listing the threat actors are using websites that imitate the google play store so they can trick users into installing the ransomware as per kaspersky malware analyst tatiana shishkova the ransomware makes use of a hard-coded key so a decryptor can be made to recover the lost files of any so this is definitely a danger to those who actually download it but i hopefully think most of you are smart enough not to do so but moving along to our next story uh, more trouble does face cd Prime project red remember cyberpunk 2077 a lot of the promises and things that were said before launch are coming back
back to bite CD Projekt Red. Obviously, we have the outcry from the gamers community that are going through every inch, everything that CDPR said and said, why isn't this in the game? But then we also have the investors who are absolutely livid with the state of the game because remember, Cyberpunk 2077 was said to be running surprisingly well in last-gen consoles before release. That was the only indication that we had for how the game ran on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 base platforms, and we all obviously found out that that just was not true. And now, weeks after release, uh, CD Projekt Red stock has fallen by more than 40%, and it seems to be steady at that rate for right now. But a lot of investors lost a lot of money, and a lot of them are pissed, and they're looking at legal avenues to go after CD Projekt's management for well, blatantly misleading them about how this launch was supposed to be going. And right now, there's been five law firms that have filed class action lawsuits against CD Projekt. Uh, Pennsylvania-based RM Law filed a suit on January 8th, joining four other law firms, that being Shaw Law, Rosen Law, Breger, Eagle, and Squire, Wolf, Haldenston, Adler, Freeman, and Hers. Those are the five law firms that right now have taken legal action against CD Projekt. This is the worst case scenario. I don't think any of us could have expected this, but I guess the assumption from a lot of people is that these law firms will eventually bow out or they'll combine their lawsuits into one big one. But yes, this is real. CD Projekt faces a huge legal threat. And so far, the reaction to this is simply a statement which was along the lines of, we will be undertaking vigorous action to defend itself against any such claims. That's all they're saying. Of course, they're going to defend themselves, but this is a, a situation that will play its way out in the courts. And I just could not have imagined this scenario at all happening uh, at the beginning of 2020 when we were all getting excited for Cyberpunk 2077's release in April, and then September, then November, then finally December. 2020. But with the latest lawsuit that was filed against CDPR, RM Law, this is what they alleged in their lawsuit announcement. They said the complaint alleges that throughout the class period, defendants made false and or misleading statements and or failed to disclose that Cyberpunk 2077 was virtually unplayable on the current generation Xbox or PlayStation systems due to an enormous number of bugs too. As a result, Sony would remove Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store and Sony, Microsoft, and CD Projekt would be forced to offer full refunds for the game three Consequently, CD Projekt would suffer reputational and pecuniary harm and for, as a result, defendant's statements about its business, operations, and prospects were materially false and misleading and or lacked a reasonable basis at all relevant times. When the true details entered the market, the lawsuit claims that investors suffered damages. And honestly, I could say from an outside perspective, a lot of that is true. I mean, the company lost 40% of its stock value since launch and nobody before launch had any expectation that this is just going to be such a disastrous launch. But we'll see what happens. This is going to take its time through the court system, but no matter what, this launch has been everything but what I think we all had expected or envisioned for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, the biggest problem or threat that CDPR is actually facing comes from their home country of Poland, in which the government is now getting involved and they are investigating CDPR for this disastrous launch. Just how times have changed. I think it was about a decade ago in which The Witcher 2 was being presented to the President of the United States just because of how much of a cultural significance it has in Poland, but here we are 10 years or a decade over that later and it's just crazy how things have drastically changed with Poland now investigating CDPR. The following report comes from gamesindustry.biz who says that CDPR is being investigated by specifically Poland's Office of Competition and Consumer Protection and it's been said that the Polish watchdog agency spokesperson has said that the organization approached CDPR to understand the issues with the game and what actions had been taken to fix them. In quotes the spokesperson says, we will check how the manufacturer is working on the introduction of amendments or solutions to difficulties preventing the game to work on different consoles, but also how it intends to act in relation to the persons who filed complaints and are dissatisfied with their purchase due to the inability to play games on owned equipment despite previous assurances that it would. And then this article does continue and it cites that the newspaper that originally revealed this investigation, they got an analysis from a Polish lawyer who explained that despite CDPR's 
developers' best efforts to fix the issues with Cyberpunk 2077, this might not be enough to prevent it from being accused of unfair market practices. Should this agency find that CDPR has indeed been misleading in the run-up to the disastrous launch of Cyberpunk 2077 and has not made enough effort to fix the problems now that it is out, the organization could fine the studio up to 10% of its annual income and or impose refunds. Absolutely insane, just unprecedented everything that is happening with Cyberpunk 2077, but this is why it's important to be extremely truthful about a game's launch before its release. I mean, obviously Cyberpunk 2077 has been a success in terms of sales, it sold over 13 million copies within its first two weeks, but expectations were a lot larger in the marketing world, and now CDPR is facing the consequences for just not being truthful about the game's performance, especially on last generation consoles. And really, we have no indication yet of when this game will be returning to the PlayStation Store, which is another big factor, because I don't think any of us could have expected that this game would be off the PlayStation Store for how long it has already been. Next though, let's talk about something that blew up over the last week or so, that is a Cyberpunk 2077 quote-unquote leak, which a bunch of YouTubers and gaming outlets ran with, treating it as fact. As I've been saying on Twitter the last week or so, I didn't believe it for a second. I always knew it was a bunch of BS, because none of it made sense, and it really seemed like somebody was just guessing based off all the public information that we have, and saying things that people want to be true, like the fact that they were saying that a huge June update is coming, the game's going to be receiving a no Man's Sky style treatment and all the cut content, so much is coming back, just none of this was at all true and I knew it was always BS and CDPR actually came out with a statement saying normally we don't comment on rumors but this time we wanted to make an exception as the story is simply not true and a bunch of other gaming journalists jumped in saying people really believe this, I think Jason Schreier was one of those and yeah, people actually did believe this, they actually think that there is a whole new game just ready to release in a couple of months but that's just not the case of course there is tons of cut content and some of these guesses are probably correct, but a lot of this is just total BS and somebody just doing this for, uh, I, I don't really know why people do these fake leaks, but it was obviously BS. Anyway, some of the claims here I did want to point out, they said that there will be major departures from the studio in the coming months, dev morale is an all-time low, and Sony is roasting their butts due to the gigantic volume of refund requests. That's all guesses that you could make. And they did claim that Sony Japan is especially furious, and I don't really know why that would be the case, because Sony Interactive Entertainment's headquarters, though the main headquarters, is over there in California, not Japan. They do have a Japanese headquarters, but that, they primarily deal with Asian affairs, and they actually do have a European headquarters, which I would imagine CDPR had to deal with, at least at first, and then it probably went up the chain to uh, their main headquarters in California, but I'm not sure why Japan would at all even be involved in this affairs, unless it went past them to all the way to the entire company, and I just don't think that would at all go past Jim Ryan. Anyway, it did continue with a lot of other claims, it said it ended up being cut a lot of the content and the final product should come in a later DLC next year which didn't buy that from the start. I do think that a lot of the big DLC probably won't be coming until late the later part of this year like end of 2021 and then some of the more significant stuff probably throughout 2022 and then the multiplayer in 2023 but that's just my sneaking suspicion. We'll talk more on that later. Uh, they said a good chunk of code is getting scrapped and rewritten and the intended game might be ready by June 2021. The Just the fictional narrative that this game's going to be ready in just a couple of months is not going to be possible. Right now, their main priority is getting this game back in the PlayStation Store. They're fixing as many bugs as possible and trying to up their performance on the base PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. They go on to make a lot of other claims. They say most departments were supposed to be lootable. There's scrapped 50,000 plus lines. Uh, they say that Keanu Reeves was never intended to be uh, Johnny Silverhand. There's a big conspiracy actually surrounding Keanu. Some people believe that the whole game was rewritten because of his appearance in the game, which I think there is some actual official statements that support that claim, but that's a discussion that we could have another day. Anyway, lots of other claims that are made here, just none of this made at all sense. They said that we've scrapped two whole arcs because the mission cleaned a save due to a bug with character placement. We've also scrapped a big portion of the underground and sewers because of bugs. Night City had three different types of cabs besides Villa Fort, and drivers would hold whole conversations and give quests that all had to be scrapped. And then they go on, they say that Morgan Blackhand's backstory 
backstory and a nod to the corporate wars is going to be coming in DLCs. They're going to be offering all kinds of crazy and cool ideas that the creator Mike Pondsmith gave us when we began briefing the project. You guys should get the complete game by the end of the year if everything goes well. I really got to go now. Take care. And a lot of people viewed this post as hope. Hope for Cyberpunk 2077 because right now CD Projekt Red is being silent. And I understand that a lot of people are waiting for that. They want that hope that this game's going to turn it on around. But the truth of the fact is we're just not there yet. CD Projekt Red is obviously being quiet and it's probably for the best. They may not have all of the plans uh, mapped out yet and there's probably a lot of content and stuff that they were planning to release probably already by now that's having to be delayed. Like some of that free DLC, I'm certain that some of that's being pushed off a little bit so they can invest more time into the patches and fixes that are supposed to be coming here in January and also February. And that's their big priority right now. But obviously I'm sure that they want to turn this game around as much as everybody else wants to see that. That. But posts like this, the reason why they wanted to come out with a statement is probably because they don't want people's expectations going through the roof again and then people being let down when June 2021 passes and then it goes into July and people are like, what the heck happened? And the truth is, a leak like this was just never real. And it's really good to get people's expectations now in check. Probably should have happened before, but uh, too little too late, I guess. Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 hopefully does have a bright future and there's a lot of evidence of some exciting stuff on the horizon. As most of you are aware, whereby now Cyberpunk 2077's free DLC page has gone live. The page doesn't offer much, all it does is reconfirm the fact that free DLC will start hitting Night City early 2021, and it said stay tuned for more information. There is a video here that doesn't really offer anything, it's just a short montage of it seems like unrelated clips, but what we know about Cyberpunk 2077's free DLC based on The Witcher 3's is the fact that there's probably going to be some armor sets, some alternative looks for some fan favorite characters like Judy Alvarez or Pan Am Palmer. We'll probably see some new weapons along with new pieces of cyberware introduced and a couple of side missions, probably a couple of new gigs, but don't expect too much. I think expectations definitely have to be in check because we do have an idea on some of the content that is coming, but I like some of the uh, ideas that people have of seeing a barbershop introduced this soon, I just don't think that's going to be happening this soon. I think definitely by the time Story DLC probably comes in the later half of 2021, we'll see that. I think that's got to be the number one feature that a lot of people want to see is being able to customize your character in game. Like the fact that it's not in this game in a cyberpunk future, it just doesn't make any sense, especially since it was a feature in The Witcher 3 in terms of the fact that you could customize Geralt's hair and beard. But for some reason, I guess cyberpunk that just couldn't happen or they ran out of time. Either way, there's a lot of mini games and stuff that people want. I just don't think we're going to be seeing that with free DLC. Now, what is possible is something that was announced before release, and that is a new game plus mode. That's something that I'm extremely hyped for because I really do want to make my way through it again with all my weapons and stuff that I've already earned. And that's something that I think that could be introduced with the free DLC, but we also have an idea based on some of the stuff that's being data mined from those who are going around within Cyberpunk 2077's files and seeing what's not in the game that should be in the game. One of those is an optical camo cyberware, and this is actually something that I believe Oda uses in his fight within the game, but anyway, this is an integumentary system cyberware in which if you activate it, it turns you almost invisible for 5, 10, or 15 seconds, greatly reducing the likelihood of detection. Cooldown is 60 seconds. This is something going to be great for stealth builds, and PC users can actually already activate this. It seems like that this is just inevitably going to be introduced, and I could definitely see that they may have pulled this, turned it off for now to introduce it as free DLC. We also have like a max tech armor set that's in the game, but it's just not accessible right now for console players. That's another thing that was mentioned within dialogue with Judy Alvarez if you follow her storyline. It's really weird why it's just not available, but that's something that definitely a max tech armor set. I think a lot of people would love to see that, and if it's already in the game, it just makes sense that that'll be probably free DLC. And then there's also some more interesting things, things that probably just are going to be scrapped. I don't think we'll see that, at least for now. Like, there is some pieces of car customization in the game's files. It's been said that by one modder that there's four car slots for car equipment that are not implemented slash used, it's also been said that Flathead, remember he was supposed to be originally a companion? Well, they found bits in the game's files of a CPU frame and software slot, so there was supposed to be originally customization that we could do to Flathead, but all of that again has been scrapped. The question is, how much of this cut content will be returned? And at this point, we just have no indication or any idea of what will 
eventually happen with this cut content. Some of this definitely will be coming in free DLC. Like we actually have some YouTube channels that have been uploading some of this content. A big shout out to YouTuber Saventra, who's uploaded a couple of videos showing or highlighting some of this cut content. And a couple of these are actual gigs that just look like CDPR ran out of time. The first one is called Hothead. I'm actually not going to be going over the details of this, especially since it may be introduced later as content, but I will show a couple of clips from this so you get an idea of what it's about. But the first one is called the gig Hothead, and it's some sort of car chase that we'll be taking on. Place is all yours. Know anything else about this virus? Judging by the level of coding, I'm thinking Militech. Someone with skills. Can you get it out? Since it looks like your average firmware, I can. But I'll have to do a hard read. The next is called Desperate Measures. I'm V. One moment, please. Sorry. I'll be right with you. Hell of a beast you got there. Oh, uh, what? That Kandachi Micro 76, strapped with dedicated cooling. Oh, yeah, plus an additional processor and modified system bus. See you hijack the motel's cams. Hell, probably the whole system, right? This next one is called the Nasty Hangover. This one's brought to us by Rogue. Remember to take cover! And last but not least, with just gigs, we have Concrete Cage Trap. You tiny Mike? The one and only. Now, we done exchange pleasantries? Need to find a way out of here, fast. You don't say. Hey, before we get moving, take this. Need someone who can actually use it. These are just some of the side quests or side jobs that are incomplete, but they are in the files of Cyberpunk 2077. It seems like some of them are just missing basic textures and whatnot, and there's some AI issues, especially with one of the car chases. Some things that can be fixed in the next couple of weeks and probably will be introduced as free DLC. So that's just an idea on some of the side missions that we could be seeing, but in terms of some of the more substantial content, we actually do have an idea of just some areas that look like they're incomplete. Like one of them, this is coming from YouTube, YouTuber Squeenie that's been shown off. We have this Metal Heaven music store location, which is somewhat high up. This is actually an established location in lore, but what's interesting is it looks like some sort of crime scene or something happened outside this store. It's detailed to the point that it looks like this is another example of abandoned content, but it looks like CDPR was working on a couple of other higher up areas in which we probably take an elevator upwards to it, and then we can explore this area, but it just, they must have ran out of time. But this is yet another good example of some of the verticality that I think a lot of us expected for Cyberpunk 2077. Of this location and how it's uh, designed, it kind of reminds me of only one more location in the game, and that's within Japan Town, in which there's some type of market that you have to take an elevator up to it, and there are some story missions related to that area, but there isn't any other locations like that outside of it. But it looks like that may have not always been the plan. And then we've talked about this in a previous video, but we also have the casino that's in the far part of North Oak, another piece of content that it looks like the team ran out of time on. Like, I'm not entirely too sure if the casino was at all supposed to be accessible, like in terms if we were actually be able to able to go inside of it, but it definitely seems like this was supposed to be in the base game in terms that we could go up to it and see it, but it does look like it's partially complete. Some of the building has some textures, it has detail to it, there's a forest surrounding it, and again, it just looks like the CDPR team ran out of time. And then, now actually going to City Center, it's been found, let's go to the YouTube channel, channel uh, Nap who explore the Militech building and again this is another one that's detailed there's textures there's all kinds of stuff within it and it looks like again missions and stuff was supposed to be going on within this the question though is how much of this content is going to turn into free DLC or DLC later on? And that's really something that none of us know. We don't know if this is future content or just content that we'll never see, but it definitely does seem like Militech, based on how this building is structured at least, there's supposed to be some more story content to it, and who knows if this is something that maybe they just put to the side for now, because I think among all these corporations, I really thought that Militech was going to play more of a role. We see, obviously, Meredith Stout, we see that mini storyline at the beginning of the game, but Militech really doesn't 
have much of a presence outside of one of the, I guess you could say, one of the big storylines with the Aldicados. That's really about it, as far as I recall, on the top of my mind right now. But yes, there's some more stuff. We've talked about the train station that's been completely scrapped, the interior is left behind. There's also a center for behavioral uh, health, which has been left behind. It looks like the train station was supposed to leave off to a bunch of locations that just now are completely just left behind, incomplete, and it's really disappointing. It just seems like the CDPR team did not have enough time to realize their full ambitions for what they had for Cyberpunk 2077, but yes, there's many locations that look like they could have been potential content, and there's just a lot of ideas for what content could be coming. Maybe not in free DLC, but story expansions, like Pacifica. There's a huge stadium that has some detail to it, but it's the question is, are they going to expand that with a DLC, or maybe are we going to see Arasaka Waterfront expanded? That whole area is just incomplete. There's nothing really to do there. There's a lot of a lot of elements within Night City that could be expanded. And then obviously we've talked about this on Twitter. I've said that I would love to see that maybe there's a space DLC that expands the ending of the game. But there's a lot of questions. That there's a lot of directions that CDPR could be going in with story DLC. So it is exciting. But for the foreseeable future, the question is how much of this free DLC will actually just be cut content. And it really could be a lot of this. It could be a lot of these gigs. It could be a lot of the cyberware and stuff that's within the files right now. It just needs to be, I guess you could say, fixed. Because a lot of this does look like it's incomplete. And the CDPR team, the reason why it was not at launch was because they ran out of time. Like police or gang vehicle chase AI exists in the game. It just, for some odd reason, isn't really implemented outside of a few rare encounters. That probably will have to change. I don't even think that needs to come in free DLC, but hopefully within one of the significant updates that are releasing just weeks from now. And based on the community's reaction to certain characters like Judy Alvarez, Pan Am Palmer, Takamura, and Victor Vector, definitely feels like some of these characters will be expanded upon within story DLC expansions, or maybe even a sequel down the road. But of course right now I know there's a lot of demand and hope that we'll see some more Pan Am in 2021. And actually that's something I took to Twitter the other day saying, and I actually got a reaction from a CD Projekt Red developer, the senior game designer chiming in saying, we all do. So maybe there is some hope that we will see some more Pan Pan Am and Judy later this year. But anyway, before I end this video, we actually did get a message from CDPR's lead quest designer Pavel Sasko, and it's something that I think a lot of people will want to take notice to. He said, Today marks the first month since Cyberpunk 2077's release. Some already beat the game, plenty are still playing, nobody yet uncovered everything that we have prepared. It took years for The Witcher 3, so it will take quite long for that game too. I love observing the process, so he's definitely hinting that there are some secrets behind for us to discover. No other game in my career took so much heart and dedication. Past 30 days, I have been reading comments, watching videos, and learning. I know there is always something that can be done better, and if not better, you can do more of what was well received by the audience, always. But I want you to know that you are being heard. Patches released so far prove it. Have in mind that not everything can be addressed instantly. Like I said before, some of this is going to take time. I have received thousands of messages. You are killing the battery on my phone, but I read all of it even when it hurts. Thank you for the first days of Cyberpunk 2077. If you want to take time to write your feedback, I would be pleased to read it. Thank you for playing. So yes, yeah, Cyberpunk 2077's lead quest designer is taking feedback, and if you want your voice heard, I definitely advise going to this post and uh, letting your thoughts be heard. I will leave a link in the description to his post. But anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 and yeah, we just hit the one month point. What do you make of the game the first 30 days? What do you make of all the chaos that has happened? Are you enjoying your time in Night City? What do you want to see improved in DLC? What are your expectations for free DLC? Let me know down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter, giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video forum, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games, and again, thank you for joining, consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.